Some of the best scenery material is found right on the side of the road. This saltbush tree is a perfect example. Depending on where you live, this may or may not be easy to find. However, the techniques I use in creating these awesome trees can be used for just about any type of natural tree armature, even the commercially available plastic tree armatures. I just make sure to pick the dead branches and with a good sample of bushes, we can get them back to the workbench and start making some trees. The secret to making these great looking trees and doing it with the greatest of ease is by using baking soda and super glue. Starting with a large bush, I gradually break it down and remove the small branches until I'm left with a section of bush that I'll be using as the trunk of my tree. The excess base is easily removed with a small hacksaw and a small hole is drilled into the base of the trunk so I can fit a mounting pin. This is where I put the baking soda and super glue to its first use. You only need a small amount of baking soda and I also find super glue gel works best, especially when working with highly absorbent material like wood. With the super glue applied, simply press the mounting pin into the hole and lightly sprinkle on some baking soda over the remaining exposed areas of glue. The super glue gel will cure almost instantly and you can then blow away the excess baking soda and cut away the excess wire from the mounting pin. I've found that using a third hand, sometimes called a soldering arm, can make it much easier to attach all of the individual branches. Being able to turn the tree on an angle and have it stay there, whilst you press each branch onto the trunk and sprinkle the baking soda, makes it much easier. Now I select smaller twigs from the bush that I will use to attach to the trunk. Being careful to select twigs that are a nice shape and that will fit in with the overall look I want to achieve with the tree. The twigs are test fitted and once I'm happy, I add the super glue, press the branch into position, and then sprinkle the baking powder over the top. Once the branch is holding its own weight, I can turn the tree around to sprinkle more baking soda on the other side of the branch, making sure to cover all the exposed areas of super glue with the baking soda. Then shake away the excess by gently tapping the tree or you can brush away the excess with a small paint brush once completely dry. You can see here how the baking soda and glue dries to a semi-translucent colour and blends the join between the two pieces almost seamlessly. The gel super glue does a great job of filling the gaps between the two pieces. The same process is then repeated over and over until the tree has the desired density of branches. The next step is adding foliage. For this I'm using a brown polyfiber from MP Scenery Products. I only need a very small amount because I'll tease it out until it's very thin. Then from that teased out piece, I pull off some smaller pieces to place over the branches of my tree. I avoid putting one large piece of polyfiber over the entire tree because it tends to result in a very uniform and unrealistic looking tree. Before adding the greenery, I spray the canopy with some spray adhesive. It doesn't need very much. And then with some Woodland Scenics coarse foam, I sprinkle it lightly over the top. I'm using a medium green, but you could use any color you desire. Shake away the excess foam and then repeat the process a second time, spraying the tree with the spray adhesive and then adding more foam until the tree gets to the density that you like. To add more definition to the tree, I'll add some leaves. 
These are MP Scenery product leaves, however there are leaves from Knock and Tremendous that I use quite often as well. It just depends on the colour preference because they are all slightly different. The same process is applied with the spray adhesive and then sprinkle the leaves over the tree. Then as a final touch to help blend everything together, I very lightly dust the tree with Woodland Scenics Burnt Grass. I only apply it from the top down. This helps give the illusion of sunlight hitting the top of the tree as well. If you're enjoying watching these videos and you want to help support the channel, you can click here. Cheers and thanks for watching.